Hey there, it's Kirsty. So I'm videoing from inside a caravan today. Um, we are getting a new bathroom put in. And because I work from home, I, um, I kind of need access to the internet and, and all of my stuff that I have indoors. Um, so I've brought my computer and stuff out here. And obviously we have a bathroom and a shower inside our, um, oh, through that door. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you in a second uh, what it's like and just talk a little bit about, um, yeah, just the different things that I've got to manage and how I'm figuring it out. So on a sort of the same to topic, but another topic as well is, um, This is my first summer really on in a prosthetic properly um, and getting out and about and, you know, doing some travel and, and trips and things around over our Christmas period. So in New Zealand, um, it's summer at Christmas time. So um, it's a fantastic day outside. You can see the builders <laughs> doing their thing and their toilet because there's no toilet. In my house at the moment um, but yeah it's been some things that I've sort of come across as a bit of a challenge one of them has been the uh, sweating inside the socket so my sockets don't fit um, quite right yet I'm getting a smaller one in the mail shortly I've been fitted for it and um, when they get looser, even though I'm wearing socks and, and things like that, it's it's still, from what I've been told, that the tighter everything is to your skin, the less likely you are to sweat. Um, so because everything's loose <laughs> around my skin, um, I do get a bit of sweat. And that has involved me, when I'm out and about, taking my leg off in public places um, and using a wee towel that I've got to pat everything dry and then put everything back on again. Otherwise, I find that all the liners get quite slippery and they all slide and move around and or roll down my leg um, and don't hang on. So that's been a bit of a challenge for me. I um, I kind of like to wear, I wear clothing like long dresses, long skirts, uh, pants and things that sort of disguise-ish that I have um, a prosthetic. I don't have a leg looking like prosthetic, so I have one with the metal bar and all those sorts of things, but um, I don't wear short shorts or short skirts or anything like that. I didn't before the amputation, so I'm not going to start wearing them just because. And um, yeah, but you know, being out in public and having to dry off your leg is um, a little bit confronting and some people have been really um, curious, stopped and stared, uh, trying not to be rude, but kind of hovering <laughs> in my peripherals. <laughs> um, sorry about the noise, it's the builders doing building, <laughs> as builders do. Um, other people have been really uncomfortable with me taking my leg off and drying it off, and I'm only, you know, I'm only sort of having it out there for, you know, a minute maybe, if that. And, um, you know, they'll look at, they'll spot it and then they'll look away and, and feel really awkward, which makes me feel more awkward. Um, like I'm apologetic for their discomfort. Um, and to come to terms with that, I've had to sort of have these little discussions with myself about normalizing this, um, not just for myself, but for other people as well. Um, you know, people of disabilities should be able to, you know, adjust themselves or do whatever they need to do to maintain their comfort. And it should be just considered normal in our societies. Um, and it's only through exposure and, repeat, you know, repeatedly seeing the, repeatedly, repetitively seeing the sort of stuff happen that it becomes more normal for everybody. Um, and then, 
you know, the health and well-being, obviously, of, of amputees and things like that will be increased and, you know, and then it, will, it won't seem so, um, you know, out of everybody's normal comfort zones. So here's a video of the things that I'm sort of struggling to get around. Sorry if this makes you feel a little bit dizzy, but one is the very steep steep. Um, and there's no handrails here. There is one on this side, but that's on a funny slope, so it's not very comfortable, um, you know, for like lowering yourself down onto a step. And the other thing is we don't use the bed. But this is the shower. And it's teeny tiny. Um, very little. And I have to crawl into it. And on my hands and knees. And then I can twist myself around to sit on that. Um, and then use the handrail that I've supplied to um, stand up and get clean. Uh, I hadn't anticipated this um, challenge. It is doable, but it is a little bit difficult. Excuse the giant dog in the way. And then this is the bath, uh, the rest of the bathroom, the toilet and um, the sink. So there's not a lot of movement um, around and I have to keep my leg on all the time now. So I was in the habit of um, taking my leg off uh, at the end of the day and giving my skin some fresh air but right up until bedtime now I'm wearing my leg um, just so that I can you know do the last minute you know bathroom breaks and things like that <laughs> it's a very curious dog he knows he's not supposed to be in here don't you Griffin yeah you're a toad you go outside go on outside outside So I found um, leading up to, excuse the painting, it's the dog. Um, I found leading up to, you know, these massive renovations of getting a new bathroom put in with a wet floor, a higher toilet seat, um, the bathroom sink is, our old one was a, you know, a fully sort of cupboarded underneath. This one's going to have room. So if I'm in my wheelchair, I can tuck in underneath it and brush my teeth front on um which is kind of exciting but I found leading up to it really really um worrisome worrisome about how I was going to cope with you know living partially inside a caravan um and we're going to be doing this for the next six to eight weeks possibly longer I really hope not um and yeah just the extra work that it takes to you know keep sort of like this little area clean and tidy as well as you know my house still needs to be kept clean and tidy um but so far we're into day three and it three or four four and it hasn't been too bad um I'm able to get work done it's a little bit quieter in here especially if I shut the door uh it does get pretty hot um and not everything is you know super comfortable like it's not a comfortable couch it's not a comfortable sort of seating um area my office is set up with ergonomic chairs and tables and things so um but it is doable and yeah that's kind of just how it's been physically a little bit for me lately I I'm excited to tell you all about the two new feet that I'm getting. I know that sounds really bizarre, but um, I have two at the moment. I have one that's really stable and that I had as I was sort of getting the hang of being an amputee and wearing a prosthetic. Uh, and the second one's got a bit more movement and, you know, it allows, you know, some sort of flexibility around the ankle area. And it's got like a two-toe thing, which is which is quite handy if you're working on uneven surfaces because they flex as well. So the two new feet that I'm getting, one, I'm well, I'm excited for both of them, to be honest, 
One of them is where you push a button and then you can change the heel height on the foot. The foot itself, not so flexible, um, but what this will allow me to do is to wear high heels. So my injury is 18 years long. I've only been an amputee for a year and a half of that. Um, but I haven't been able to wear high heels since, you know, for the last 18 years. And before my injury, I didn't wear anything but high heels. So um, this is kind of exciting. And I've spent the last 20, well, nearly 20 years hating shoe shopping. Absolutely hate it. Like it would end in tears. Um, and I would often not buy shoes at all. Um, when I was... Uh, I was up in Queenstown yesterday with my mum and we had a look in a shoe shop and I just got all giddy and exciting because I could actually entertain the idea of having high heels again. Obviously, I mean, I'm going to start slow and low. Um, but yeah, to be out of sneakers or sneakery shoes <laughs> is fantastic. Now, the other prosthetic that I'm getting is... Um, I'll share a link actually in the description that I've got from my um, from the limb center about what it is, but basically it's going to have um, some even more movement, and it's going to allow me to do sort of more things like walking in the bush and on our neighbor surfaces, you know, riverbeds and beaches and all those sorts of things, um, and that's. Where I prefer, excuse me, where I prefer to get my um, exercise from is in those environments. So I'm just quietly looking forward to that. Well, not even quietly. I'm quite excited. <laughs> uh, I'm a little bit excited too because it's relatively new um, and it's definitely brand new to my, you know, the, my prosthetist. Um, he's never had anybody in it, so it's going to be new for him too. So. It's going to be a bit of a learning curve for us all, but I'm I'm up for the challenge. Another thing that I have um, decided to do <laughs> is um, roller skate. So I used to love it when I was a kid, and I would like to be able to do it again. Um, I'm lucky that I was able to contact um, somebody from a roller derby group, and they have like trial days um, or try out days, I should say. Uh, I don't want to be in a, in a roller derby. I'm not physically up for that. But maybe, you know, refereeing or, um, I don't know, being a support person might be good, you know. And this is a massive step for me to get involved in something that's community-based, something that um, puts me out there. I I. My anxiety and my PTSD often, you know, like the my first reaction in all instances of, you know, these sorts of opportunities is just like, no, you know, I don't have the energy or um, I'm not sure if I can keep up or I'm not sure if I'm over committing. Um, and this year I've decided that this is the year that I'm going to do things that make me happy. And listening to that voice of fear in my head does not make me happy. Um, so I'm feeling a little bit of, you know, sorry, I keep stopping and starting. Um, the builders keep coming out and cutting stuff. Um, but yeah, I've, I'm feeling, I don't know if I feel proud of myself, but I feel relieved um, that I'm doing something that's going to stretch me a little bit and get me outside of my comfort zone. Um, I've also made a big decision in regards to my studying. So I have switched from psychology um, to counselling. So I did a year of psychology and absolutely loved it. Thought it was fantastic, learnt so much. But um, it's more about fixing, you know, how the brain's working. Um, whereas... I interpret um, counselling to be a little bit more of a talking kind of support or a listening kind of support um, and a bit more of a guidance kind of um, area, which is where I, where I feel like I could probably be more of service to others. Um, 
so that was a big decision for me and I'm really happy with it. Um, another thing that I've done this year that has been quite good is that I've decided and has, have put into practice starting to um, drive my own prosthetic experience. Um, so normally I would take my the advice of my prosthetist, who is a fantastic guy, he does a fantastic job. Um, and kind of I've been running at the pace that he has suggested in terms of what feet I use, whether or not I need a different prosthetic, what kind of lining I will use, um, sorry, a different kind of socket is what I meant. Uh, so yeah, so I've been, you know, relying very heavily on his advice and it's been really good um, up to this point, but this year I've decided to actually push forward into the things that I want to do. So come winter, I'd like to go and do um, adaptive skiing. Um, I broke my ankle, I'd moved up to Queenstown where there's a couple of ski fields um, with the intention of skiing and in the first I don't know, month or two of being up there before the winter season, I broke my ankle. Um, it was misdiagnosed and has resulted in 18 years of multiple surgeries and drama and an amputation. Um, anyway, so, you know, to be able to go back to skiing is, you know, a, a been a goal right from sort of the moment that I found out that that was even a, a, a possibility as an amputee. Um, so I'm going to be doing that this um, winter and yeah I, so I've you know encouraged or initiated conversations with you know what do I need to do what kind of socket do I need what's the best kind of you know attachment um, situation um, I've found personally so when you get a socket fitted um, a socket for me, so far, what I've experienced so far is um, that they sort of put some plastic around your leg and draw pictures on where all your bone, bony bits and stuff are, and then they put some plaster of Paris around it. And in the early days when my limb was shrinking lots, I was having just the process. I never get this right. The limb centre guy. Um, you know, sort of manually kind of, um, you know, shaping it around my leg. Uh, and then we went on to one where the e the ear was sucked out um, of like a bag. So it kind of had some tension to it, but not loads. And then the third type for me was this big sort of balloon thing, which actually really pushes in on the stump. And I found that with the balloon one, that um, because I've got a lot of extra sort of flesh around my limb, even though it's probably just about done shrinking, um, I've still got a lot of extra sort of skin and flesh and stuff. That the the suction, the sorry, the pressured one um, would actually change the shape in the socket when it when I finally got it, based on the shape that it was, it was so painful um, and. I just I couldn't wear them and when we would do changes to the the socket even in you know like the trial stage where it's still just plastic it just wouldn't work um, or not work very well and I found that wearing it would cause me to break out in a sweat so whilst I wasn't in like excruciating agony I was in enough discomfort that I would just sweat and when I'm talking about sweating I'm talking about my hair is drenched and dripping you know kind of grossness so um, this time I took control of the situation. I said, look, that option didn't work. I need to do, um, you know, just the one with the ear suction and, you know, so that the pressure isn't so tight because obviously I have a lot of mobile flesh and I'm better off to use socks as the, you know, the method to kind of, you know, pad it out. Um, so hopefully that is the right solution, the right way forward. Um, but it's all a learning curve. And um, it's exciting when you get to a point where you know what's good and bad for you. Uh, and, you know, the guy at the Limb Centre area is fantastic about it. Really supportive. And um, I feel really happy about getting my next socket, which should hopefully arrive today.
Okay, so the place is chaotic. I have just had a visit from a cat. Um, I don't know if you can hear him in the background meowing. Mum! Mum! Um, I've got family coming to visit. And yeah, between the builders and everybody, it's, it's just a bit chaotic. So thank you very much if you've made it this far <laughs> into watching this video. Um, for sticking through it with me and hopefully you will consider liking and subscribing um, My plan this year is to definitely do more videos and Yeah, just keep you um, in the loop discuss um, Where I'm at with being an amputee the things that I get up to and um, Yeah, just any kind of life hacks that I come up with um, and yeah, I hope that you all have a fantastic day and that the year has started off really well for you all. Bye.